Praise God from whom all blessings flow. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to say good morning from the Hopewell Baptist Church, 1301 Fillmore Avenue, here in the city of Buffalo, where we're trusting God for the journey. Yeah. Trust the Lord all thy heart, lean not to their own understanding, all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. We certainly uh, want to thank our, our, our deacons on uh, this morning for devotional and prayer service, something that we have been missing over this past year. And uh, we're not back live uh, in person worship yet, but we're certainly uh, trying to get our church flow back on. And it is good uh, to hear the uh, old time uh, devotion and our voices and hearts lifted up in prayer. So we want to thank our, our deacons for uh, that devotion service. Certainly we are praying without ceasing that all is well with you and your family as we all continue to navigate through this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which has prevented us from in-person worship for going on a year now. Yes. However, we're beginning to see some light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, people are starting to be uh, vaccinated and uh, all, the, all the data shows that the vaccine is safe and effective. Amen. Uh, I myself have been fully vaccinated with the, with the vaccine. Uh, and we need to remember that COVID-19 has ended the lives of more than 500,000 people uh, in this country alone. And their lives were valuable and so is yours and your family. The vaccine is a gift to you and to those who you care most about. So when your turn rolls around, uh, we pray that you will uh, receive it. But let's not forget uh, that we're still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so we continue, we need to continue to, uh, to be safe, continue to be safe, mass up, practice social distancing, and wash your hands often. And even though uh, we're not worshiping in the physical building, there's still operating expenses that uh, continues. So bring all your ties into the storehouse that they may be meet in my house. Uh, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you yes. the windows of heaven and pour yes. you out a blessing where there shall not be room wow. enough to receive it. Yes. Here at Homewell Baptist, we believe in doing it God's way through tithes and offerings. Several ways to give, bring your tithes and offering to the church is simply put them in the mail slot or mail your check uh, directly to the church. You can also give through the app Giveify and the Cash app. Let every man, according to his purpose in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly, nor necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. For all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. Let us look to the Lord. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Yeah. Most holy and blessed God, we come once again. We do thank you for all your goodness and all your mercy. And as we come, Lord, we ask that you open our eyes that we may see all your glory. Open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our hearts that we may receive it. See that word. All we pray in the name of Jesus our Christ. Amen. 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 Once again, I want to visit... Uh, Faith, the Faith Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. Faith Hall of Fame, found in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. And today we want to focus on verse number seven, Hebrews 11, verse number seven. And it reads, by faith, mm -hmm. being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, uh, uh, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the that by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness by faith. Allow me to read that again. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of yeah. things seen as yet, not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Yeah. Want to talk from the subject? Responding to the warnings of God. Yeah, responding yeah. to the warnings of God. You'll find there is a great variety of ways in which we can react 
to the crisis of life. Mm -hmm. we, commit, we can permit fear to capture the citadel of our soul and react by fleeing from our responsibilities and our opportunities, or we can react in faith and stand steady under pressure. Those of us who are Christian followers of Christ, we should meet every situation with faith in both the goodness of God and in his abiding presence to help us in every time of need. The psalmist has said, I have faith mm -hmm. unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land mm -hmm. of the living. He said, I would have gave up. Mm -hmm. I'd have jumped out the cellar window. I'd have ran from my problem, jumped over the bridge. I, I, but I have fainted unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And we find that the recipients of this, uh, uh, this letter to the Hebrews, they were in the midst of great trials. Uh, they, they were victims of persecution and all of the inconveniences and the cruelties that accompanied being in religious, political, and economic disfavor. Uh, the writer of this tremendous book encouraged them uh, to trust in God yeah. and to be faithful to his good purpose for their lives. Yeah. So we find with inspired selectivity, he calls forward a list of spiritual heroes from the pages of the Old Testament mm -hmm. to speak a word of challenge and cheer to those who are now experiencing difficulties. You find that the study, the study of history uh, can be most profitable, can be a most profitable experience if one reads not only in order to understand the past, but gain insight into the present and what the future most likely holds. We find if we, are, if we are to find biblical stories profitable, we must let the characters of the past speak to the present that which they discovered about God in the laboratory of human experience. Mm -hmm. That's the benefit of, of yeah. reading the book. So we can find out what they went through, what they discovered, and what can help us in the present day time. And we find that while circumstances change, God remains unchanged. Yeah. What he was, he is. And what he did and through his people, he would do it today and tomorrow. If we will, but respond in faith and cooperate with him. Amen. So today, let us listen to the testimony of, of Noah. The testimony of Noah, who by faith, Build an ark in obedience to God while all his countrymen laughed at him. Find genuine faith will cause us to be faithful to God and to fear him. Paul says in Romans 3 and 18 concerning the unbelieving and the ungodly, he said, there is no fear of God before their eyes. And since faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God, we need to be reminded that the Bible contains many promises from God to his people. And these promises are made to those who have faith. And I need to ask you, have you discovered these promises and claimed them for your own life? Yeah. And we, need, we also need to recognize that the Bible contains many warnings from God. And have you, like Noah, recognized and responded to the warnings of God? And you say, how, how, how would you respond? How would you respond if you knew that God has spoken a word of warning to you? Like Noah or like Noah's neighbors? Examine yourself. You need to examine yourself. Are you living the life of faith? And we need to, every now and then, we need to put ourselves to a test. Now this past year, this COVID pandemic, you know, our faith has been tested. Yeah. We've been in some, some crisis over this last year. We've not been able to come together and worship with one another, come together to encourage one another. And so certainly our faith has been challenged. We've been worried about whether or not when, when we, 
when are we going to come up out of this pandemic? We begin to doubt God, but God has been faithful. The old songwriter said, I've come this far by faith, and he hasn't failed me yet. So we need to put ourselves to the test. First, we understand God constantly warns us against danger. You find from the beginning of time, God has warned man against the destructive nature of sin. Some of the first instructions given to Adam in the garden were words of warning. Genesis 2 and 17, he said, he told them, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in that day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Yeah. Yeah. Adam and Eve did not heed the warning of God. And then in Genesis 3 tells us of their unbelief and their fall under the destructive power of sin. Amen. And we find by their attitudes and action of unbelief, disobedience, and greed for equality with God, they committed spiritual suicide and polluted the spiritual foundation from which the whole human race was to flow. The Bible is the record of God's continuing activity to save people from the ravages of sin. And if we respond to God's warning and accept his gracious invitation with confidence and cooperation, we can be delivered from the awful trinity of the awful trinity of sin. God also warns us concerning the peril of self-deception. Uh, Proverbs 14 and 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And in Proverbs 12 and 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearken unto counsel is wise. Repeatedly the scriptures will say to us, Be not deceived. We place so much emphasis on the love and mercy of God that we underestimate the other side of the nature of God. God's wrath has been described as the other side of his love. And because God does love, he cannot condone and tolerate that which violates his own nature and that which destroys man who is the crown of his creation. God is a moral God. And our universe is constructed on a moral basis. Mm -hmm. The universe itself is in opposition to the man who frankly breaks the laws of God and the laws of society. Yeah. Sin, by its very nature, brings punishment into the life of the sinner. Yeah. In the Old Testament, we read in Numbers 32 and 23, and be sure your sin will find you out. Mm -hmm. This verse does not teach that all sin will be found out by others, but it does declare that our sins will find us out. Many, many of the laws of God are what is known as self-executing laws. And this means that they carry with them the seed of their own punishment and that it's impossible for a man to sin and to escape suffering. You'll find the tragedy is that others suffer also, mm -hmm. not for our sins, but because of our sins. The writer of Ecclesiastic, he observed, he said, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You have you recognized the warnings of God. God, God, God speaks in a variety of ways to those who have ears to hear and to those who sincerely desire to escape the way of self-destruction. Have, have you let the written word of God speak to your mind and heart? The psalmist says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I sin not against thee. And you understand the habit of memorizing selective passages of scripture can be most profitable both for the individual and for the family as whole. And to do so provides the Holy Spirit with a divine channel of communication to our heart in the time of need that is bound to come to each of us. You all, you all been there when we memorize scripture, when we're going through some mourning, we're going through some disappointment, our hearts have been broken, and we find tears coming down 
our cheeks. And then we remember the scripture, Psalm 30 and 5, where we that may endure for a night with joy coming in the morning. We come to remember the scripture, the Holy Spirit will bring it back to our mem memories. And many times we find ourselves in a valley of some sort. And, but we do realize that though yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, they, they comfort me. We, we're going through this pandemic, but we do re remember reading in this word that this soon will pass. Yeah. We got the word of God that storms may come, but as storms come, storms go. Nobody has seen a storm that stays. It'll come and it may stay a while, but sooner or later, it's going to leave. God, God may speak a word of warning to us through the fall of someone else. Occasionally, we see tragic results of the carelessness of those who neglect to observe traffic signs and signal lights. And at times, the traffic offender is the victim, but in many incidents, others suffer. Paul had something like this in mind when he said in Galatians 6 and 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, Concerning thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And we find there are many, there are many wrecks along the highway of life. Yeah. Some of you have been in some 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 wrecks during the course of your lifetime where you was running and running hard with the devil, and eventually he left you on the roadside to destruction. And there are many wrecks on the along the highway of life, and each of these will speak a word of caution. And warning to us if we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Many times some of us got children and we try to give them some wise counsel because we don't have some wrecks along the way. We try to tell them and warn them about the danger of doing drugs, the danger of drinking alcohol, the danger of living a loose life. And they said, well, how would you know? Well, I had a few wrecks along the highway of, of life. Drinking and caused me to get in some wrecks in life. Smoking and doing weed and things like that that cause you to be wrecked along the highway of life. And what I'm trying to do is avoid you getting into another wreck. And that's why you need to hear the words that are spoken. God may speak a word of warning to us through some godly devotion person who may be in the form of, of may be in the form of advice or even a rebuke. Jesus instructed members of the early church to be compassionate concerning both for the individual and for the church when one of the members fall in sin. Yeah. The church would be a dynamic more force today if it was compassionate enough for his own to follow the instruction of his law. So many of us need to understand this is a pick up religion, not a put down religion. We need to take the warnings of God. What can happen to someone else can happen to you. You ought to be careful to be making fun of somebody that falls down because the next step you make, you may find yourself on the ground. And when we see someone else that falls into sin, someone else that falls along the way, it's our job to pick them up again and set them back on their way. It's our job when somebody is down and feeling depressed, it's our job to lift up their spirit, give them a word of encouragement along the way. And we find we miserably fail to obey him and to please him when we resort to harsh criticism instead of exercising compassion, concern for the way. And sometimes church folk can get beside themselves. And instead of helping our children, we drive them away with too much criticism. We need to be careful about the criticism. Yes, we need to speak a word of rebuke. Yes, we need to speak a word of correction. But we need not get so hard on them that we drive them away. Amen. We find that God will speak words of warning to us through the Bible lessons of our Sunday school teacher and through the sermons of your pastor. In every lesson, there's a, there's a lesson for you. Every Sunday school lesson, there's a lesson for you. In every Sunday school lesson, there's a warning for you. In every sermon that's preached, there's a warning somewhere for you. 
You don't have to take the whole grocery bag from the sermon. Just take what you need and put it in the bag and take it home with you. But there's a warning there. You're not doing Sunday school lesson just to get a historical viewpoint. But you're doing the Sunday school lesson because there is a warning from God. And you have to ask yourself, God, what do you want me to see? What are you trying to tell me? What are you warning me about? Preach that. God, God has placed the Holy Spirit within your heart, uh, not only to lead and empower you for service, but also to warn you of the presence of spiritual danger. He tells you, quench not the spirit. Galatians said, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And then the third point here uh, is the key point here, nor believe God. Yeah. Noah believed God. He, he, he took God at his word. Yeah. yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to take God at his, at his word. He said he won't leave us nor forsake us. We need to take him at his word. He said he'll be food on our hungry tables. Take him at his word. He'll be a doctor in a sick room. But take him at his word. And Noah took God at his word. He did not assume that God was speaking just to hear himself talk. He knew that God was not teasing him or merely trying to frighten him. And when we study the word of God, not as ancient history, but as God speaking to us in the present, and we find that, I don't know if you read your devotion this morning, but you're not all or not read it for to get ancient history. But you ought to find out what God is trying to talk to you and tell you in the presence. And we find have heard God speak a word of warning. Noah was moved with fear. And keep in mind, this was a godly fear. It was not a scare. He was not scared of God in the sense that he wanted to run away from him. But he had a reference regard for both the truthness and the power of God to do what he said that he was going to do. Yeah. Noah was moved by fear for the welfare of his family and the consequences that he prepared out in obedience and instructions of the Lord. Right. And you find today we need to rediscover and reactivate an attitude of wholesome fear of the Lord. Yeah. As I pray over this last year, you haven't lost your fear of the Lord. I still have awe of the Lord. I still fear the Lord. I still need to bring the Lord the very best yeah. that I have. Yeah. We find here at the Hopewell Church, we said today we're going to get back into the worship of the Lord. Yeah. We're going to reestablish our respect and reverence for the Lord. Yes, there may not be many folk here. It may be only us few folk here, but we're going to come and we're going to give God our best. This Sunday, we're going to put on our suit and our tie. We're going to come in and give God the praise because we reverence God. We have a fear of God that we want to give him everything that we have. We find that the wise men said in Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. He also said in Proverbs 9 and 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He also said the fear of the Lord is the fountain of life and depart from the snares of death. you find there, there is no hope for the man who does not have a wholesome and reverent fear of God. Yeah. No fear, faith and fear led him to action. Yeah. He made decisions that were decisive for both him and his family. Yeah. I need to ask you, how have you reacted to the warnings of God? I want you to know that the wages of sin is still death. Yes, sir. And we find from the beginning of time, the big lie has been you can sin and escape suffering. Mm -hmm. Men continue to fall for this line of the evil one and swallow the hook line and sink. Oh, sin not only violates the conscience and deadens the will, but it brings about the death of all that is finest and best within the human soul. Sin separates a man from God, from his fellow humans, from his family, and from his better self. There is judgment to come. Without apology or hesitation, the Bible said that one day man shall stand before God 
to give account of his deeds. God, God would have us to meet him on the basis of his mercy rather than on the basis of his judgment. We find that we hear that all the time. We thank God for his grace and for his mercy. But we know that if justice had its way, we'd all be dismissed from his presence. Thank God for his mercy. We read in Acts 17, we find that God now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Because he had appointed the day in which he would judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained. Whereof he have given assurance unto all men that he has raised him from the dead. Yeah. You find the law of harvest is still in force. Yeah. Bible says, Be not deceived. Yeah. God is not mocked. Yeah. Whatsoever yeah. man soweth, that shall he also reap. Yeah. It's the law of nature and of God that reap, man reaps according to the law of kind. Yeah. He reaps what he sows. Yeah. For he that soweth to his flesh, shall of his flesh reap corruption. And he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. God warns us that there's no escape for those who neglect to repent and believe. Someone has said the shortest road to hell is by the highway of tomorrow. Yes, Proverbs writer reminds us, boast not of thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring. Now is the time for all wise and sensible persons to pay attention to the warning of God and to respond by faith to his invitation and promises. The cross is God's stop sign. Red light and barricade on the road to ruin. It's the glorious thing about being on this road. God, you can make a new turn. On God's road, there's no illegal U-turn. You're headed for down the road of destruction. You can make a U-turn anywhere and turn and head back to the cross. I urge you today to respond to his mercy and love and his forgiveness while you still have time and opportunity. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We need to take healing, healing Take heed of the warning of God today. We need to repent of our sins. For we know by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. The Bible says he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be dead. We need to respond to the warnings of God. The Bible is full of warnings. And we need to take heed. Particularly in this time that we're living in now, we need to respond to the warnings of God. These days have been coming, but we have failed to respond. But we need to respond by faith. Mm -hmm. Today, the day is first Sunday. Yeah. And uh, it's where we celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper. So traditionally, in the Baptist Church, we celebrate the Lord's Supper on first Sunday. We find that in the Bible it says as they were eating, as they were eating, uh, Jesus, he took the bread, he took the bread, and, and, he, and he blessed it, right? And he, and he gave it to the disciples, he said, take, eat, he said, this is my body. And then the Bible says he, he took the cup, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shed for many for the remission of sins. The Bible says when they, when they had finished, they sung a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Blessings and keep trusting God for the journey. Amen.